friends, I am back with the fourth video of video series on class 9 science motion and in this video we are going to learn about acceleration and also graphical interpretation of motion. The word accelerate, accelerate means to increase, accelerate, literally the word accelerate means to increase. So the rate of change of velocity is known as acceleration. So as I mentioned that initially we started with position. So what will define, what quantities defined position, distance and displacement. Then we started with rate of change of position. So for that we introduced speed and velocity. Now we want to see the rate of change of velocity. So for that we have acceleration. So acceleration is a vector quantity. That means it not only needs magnitude but also needs direction. So whenever we talk of acceleration, we actually talk about the rate at which the velocity is changing. So we do not use the term speed here because acceleration is a vector quantity. The SI unit for acceleration is meter per second square because uh, velocity, what is the unit for velocity? It is meter per second divided by time which is again second. So this gives meter per second square. So let us take this example of the same car. So if you see initially the speed of the car or the velocity of the car is very slow. Then suddenly the speed increases and again it increases all the more. Now see while talking about velocity sometimes we often use the term speed also and because speed and velocity both are actually talking about the rate of change of the position but the only difference is that one has direction and the other one doesn't have direction. So even if sometimes I use the term speed please do not get confused right. So in this case what did we see the velocity of the car increased initially it was less then it increased again it increased little more. So this change of velocity so how this velocity is changing with time that rate is known as acceleration. So now I mean, in, in our previous slides, while we were talking about velocity and speed, we were talking about position time graphs and distance time graphs. So now let us talk about velocity time graph. So what is a velocity time graph? It is basically a plot on where you have time on the x-axis and velocity along y-axis. So this graph basically tells us how the velocity is varying with time. Now we will see that how do we determine acceleration from the velocity time graph. So if you look at a velocity time graph like this, if you have a velocity time graph like this where your velocity is increasing consistently with time, that means after one hour, let us suppose this time is in hours and this velocity is in kilo, I mean it is in kilometer per hour. So if you see that the velocity is one kilometer per hour when your time is one hour. Again when your time is two hours, the velocity is two kilometers per hour, right? Again when your time is three hours, the velocity is three kilometers per hour. That means in every one hour, the change in velocity is one kilometer per hour that means for every equal interval of time your velocity is also increasing equally so that means velocity is uniformly increasing with time so in such kind of a velocity time graph the slope of this graph gives you the acceleration you see it is very similar to what we have studied the slope of a distance time graph gives speed slope of a position time graph gives velocity similarly slope of a velocity time graph gives you acceleration so now let us look at some of the examples where your acceleration is zero so the first example is when your car is at rest if the car is at rest it is not at all moving so if it is not at all moving there is no change in position right so your displacement is zero when your displacement is zero, your velocity is zero. When velocity is zero, your acceleration is zero, right? So the one scenario is when the object is at rest, the acceleration has to be zero. The next scenario is the car is in motion, but the car is in uniform motion. What is uniform motion? As we have discussed, uniform motion means it covers equal distances and equal intervals of time. So in case of uniform motion, what happens? Your velocity, uniform motion means the velocity remains constant. 
right that is how the plot is when you see your position time graph the plot is like this that is the position is increasing with time but it is increasing equally that means equal distances in equal intervals of time so therefore your velocity remains constant throughout that means if this if i say that this car is moving at a speed of 2 kilometers per hour that means at every instant of time the velocity is 2 km per hour so the velocity remains constant now if your velocity remains constant what will happen to the acceleration acceleration is nothing but rate of change of velocity which we often write it as dv by dt i was not much interested to put uh, put up this differential equation because you are not yet familiar with d by dt what is this d by dt so please do not bother yourself with this because you will study about it when you go to class 11th in your mathematics we will talk about differentiation and integration and there you will get idea about all these things so whenever we try to find rate of change of something we write it in this form here we want to find out the rate of change of velocity so we write it as dv by dt so that now here when your velocity is not at all changing with time what was acceleration it was change of velocity with time but if your velocity is not at all changing with time that means the body is not accelerating what is acceleration it is basically when your velocity changes if the velocity increases or decreases we say that the body is accelerating but if velocity remains constant your acceleration is zero right so these are the two scenarios where your acceleration is zero so now let us look at the graphical representation of motion so graphical representation will talk about the graphs which give us a lot of information about the motion of an object so previously what are the different types of graphs which we have studied so far we, we talked about distance time graph we talked about position time graph we have also talked about the velocity time graph so now let us look at some of the graphs and let us see what do they interpret so we will now talk about some of the velocity time graphs because we have already spoken about the distance time graphs uh, in our, in in our previous topic right so here let us talk of some of the velocity time graphs and we will see that by looking at the graphs what can we interpret about the motion of that object so let us consider the first scenario where we have a plot like this so everywhere velocity is along the y axis and time is along the x axis so what does this show this shows that the velocity increases the first thing it shows is as time increases as time increases velocity also increases right when time is 1 so normally i mean how do you know that what does this graph show see it is something like this let us suppose if this is time this is velocity when your time is here your velocity is here so you get this point again when your time is here your velocity is here so you get this point your time is here your velocity is here so you get this point so when you join these points you get a straight line something like that right so that means as time increases your velocity is also increasing correct so that means the body has acceleration correct so what kind of motion is it this is uniformly accelerated motion why it is uniformly accelerated motion because velocity increases equally in equal intervals of time right so therefore this body will have a constant acceleration the acceleration is constant here correct let us consider the next graph where you have the velocity constant with time so what does this show this shows that even though your time keeps on increasing but your velocity is constant at a value of 3 so velocity is constant this implies that acceleration is zero that means this body does not have any acceleration so the body moves with uniform velocity so this represents a uniform motion that is body moves with uniform velocity so this is uniform motion the third scenario where you have a straight line which is declining that means as your time increases the value of the velocity corresponding to that instant i mean see when it is 1 when time is 1 
your velocity was this much. When time is 2, your velocity is this much. When time is 3, your velocity is this much. That means with increase in time, your velocity is decreasing. Right? So the velocity is decreasing. So what now whenever the velocity increases with time, we call it as acceleration. Whenever the velocity decreases with time, we generally use another term which is known as retardation. Because as I told since the term accelerate means to increase. That is why we use acceleration for increase in velocity. For decrease in velocity we often call it as retardation or sometimes it is also known as negative acceleration. So in this case we say that it is uniformly retarded motion. It is you why is it uniform because the decrease is uniform see for one Every one hour, the decrease is one kilometer per hour. First, it decreased from three to two, then it decreased from two to one, then it decreased again from one to zero. So that it is decreasing uniformly. So this decrease in velocity with time is known as retardation or negative acceleration. Or sometimes in many of the books, they also use this term deceleration. But most commonly we use the term retardation. Right? So these are some of the scenarios which are, I mean, these are some of the facts which are depicted by the velocity time graphs. So it was just to tell you that how the graphical representation of motion is also helpful. Just by looking at the graphs, you can tell about the motion of that object. We will look at another interesting thing here that from the velocity time curve, we can also get displacement. I mean, in our one of the previous slides, I told you that the slope of the velocity time graph gives acceleration, right? So now we will see how can we determine displacement from the velocity time curve. Now, in order to determine that, let us take the simple example where the object is moving with uniform velocity. So how would the graph look like if an object is moving with uniform velocity? That means the velocity is constant with time. So this is how your curve will look like. Now area under this velocity time curve would mean this area. It would mean this area. Right? Whenever we plot any curve, let us suppose if this is my velocity time curve, area under this curve would mean this area. Similarly, if this is my velocity time curve, the area under this would mean this area. Right? That is how we determine the area under any curve. So this is the area. Correct? So what would be this area? This area will be equal to, let us suppose if this is O, this is A and this is B. So this will be equal to area of this rectangle would be nothing but OA into OB. What is OA? OA is nothing but time and what is OB? It is nothing but OB is representing the velocity. So area is nothing but velocity into time. Now by definition of velocity, we know that what is velocity? Velocity is change of displacement over time. Change of displacement over time. So velocity into time can be written as displacement. So therefore, area under the curve is equal to the displacement. So from velocity time curve, you can identify two things. Slope of the velocity time curve will give acceleration and area under the velocity time curve will give you displacement. So what are the conclusion that we get from the position time graphs and the velocity time graphs? Slope of a position time graph gives us velocity. So Velocity is what? Velocity is change of position with time. So change of position with time. That is why the slope of the position time graph gives velocity. Similarly, slope of velocity time graph gives acceleration because acceleration is nothing but change of velocity with time. Right? Therefore, slope of the velocity time graph gives acceleration. Area under the velocity time graph for uniformly accelerated motion gives displacement. Correct? So these are some of the points which we concluded from our discussion on uh, the graphical representation of motion.
I hope you found this video useful and in the next video we are going to practice lots and lots of numericals on all these concepts that we have learned so far on speed, velocity, average and instantaneous speed and velocity, uniform, non-uniform motion, path length and displacement. So stay tuned.